Hello again, YouTube. It's Coach Rachel coming on with another shoe review for you guys. A little bit of a forgotten carbon plate eraser from Ultra, the Ultra Vanish Carbon. And here it is. I um, wear a size eight and a half in women, so I'd be a size uh, seven in men just to uh, give uh, a little bit of a context of what, what's in front of you here. Uh, just to kind of go through a couple details and a little bit of how this video plays out. This is kind of this is part one of the video, and if you can bear with me and stick around, part two has a little bit of a reaction right after I did a fart like workout, because I do think you should run in the shoe easy and run in the shoe at some pace, because the mechanics of your running easy versus hard are quite a bit different, and the shoe will take on new characteristics at various paces. So it's important to put the shoe through a bit of a a workout so you can uh, provide a good review. But let's knock out a couple specs and then a couple details and then segue right into that video and try to keep this short and sweet for you guys. So this um, Vanish Carbon, uh, men's size 8, correction, men's size 9, it's uh, 7.3 uh, ounces. So it's a pretty, pretty light uh, racing shoe. So that would bring it in around just below 6.5 ounces for me um, in my size 8.5 uh, shoe. And uh, so their midsole area... What they're going to call uh, midsole here is um, their Ultra Ego Pro. Ego, yeah, let's, let's do that. The outsole is an EVA foam, and it's quite soft. Very, very squishy. Not a maximalist cushion shoe, because that's upwards of like a 40 millimeter shoe or 50 millimeter. So segueing into the stack height of the shoe, it's 33 millimeters, but something that you know a lot of you may already know with Ultra is they do not do any drop at all. So 33 millimeters means it's 33 millimeters here and it's 33 millimeters here, rendering it as a zero drop, no drop shoe. And that's something that, you know, definitely as you're hunting around for new shoes, particularly a carbon plate racing shoe, please keep that in mind um, when you're making your selection. So it has a pretty, you know, breathable, uh, engineered upper, you know, as they describe it. And it is very breathable. I, I do like this very much. Uh, the tongue is not gusseted whatsoever. I'll try to open up the shoe a little bit here, uh, kind of peer down in there um, between the laces. This tongue is completely independent of the shoe. But that's also going to get into a little bit of a discussion of, um, you know, the lockdown. So, you know, people like zero to 10 rating. So let's, let's uh, look at that in a little bit. The ride and comfort, I'll go six and a half, seven ish out of 10. I thought it was a very comfortable, soft shoe. I thought the ride was good. And I did feel the plate, the efficiency of that carbon plate giving me a little bit of return uh, when I picked up the pace. So closer to the six minute mile pace for me, relatively, I started to notice a little bit of the pop back, uh, particularly when you would get you know, a little more on the toe. So with it being a zero millimeter drop shoe, when I put the shoe down here on the side, you can see that there is still space under here. So with zero drop, it's obviously zero drop when it's sitting just like this. But if you're running four foot, you know, mid, mid foot to four foot, then it kind of will pop up for you. So it takes a little bit of that zero drop strain off. And that's, a, you know, a caveat I should uh, mention to you guys. I'm nervous when I run in the shoe because I've had surgery on my Achilles and I have to be very, very careful. That being said, didn't really have any issues on, on the test runs I did with the shoe. Now into a few things I don't like, going back to the zero to 10 scoring. The laces, uh, I kept having to retie my shoe and I haven't had to do that in any pair of shoes in years. So this to me was an issue. Another small issue I had, I can show it to you. Now it, it could be a fluke. I'm not gonna hold it against Ultra. These things just happen. But the uh, little grommet came off when I had to relace the shoe to get myself a nice lockdown. The lockdown was tricky. The first day I rode in the shoe, it was a very easy, very short run just to tell my body, hey, you're running in something a little bit different. And I had some heel slippage and this dang thing kept coming undone. Uh, finally had to double knot it on my um, uh, fart leg run, the next run I did in it. But I did get a much better lockdown. My heels stayed uh, secure. There is a little bit of a uh, bumper back here. It's very minimalistic, like in, in the back part here, down here, there's, there's really no foam. And in this upper tab area, there really isn't any foam. Midway about where I'm moving my fingers up and down on the inside, there's a little foam ring that uh, helps uh, pad the Achilles a little bit and help give you a snug little lockdown without compressing the Achilles because you want security but you do not want the actual tendon being pressed on uh, when your heel is secured in the cup. 
So that, that was a nice uh, feature. While the laces, in my opinion, I'm going to say it, are terrible, the lockdown between the eyelets, it's great. You know, you have to work almost as hard to untie the shoe um, as tying it. So to me, that, that's, a, that's a good feature. Um, when you go like this and you're pulling the laces down, it holds very, very well. The tongue's a little thin for my taste. I wish it had a little bit more padding because when I was securing the shoe to my comfort level of preventing any heel slip or anything, I kind of felt the laces just a little bit on the top of the tendon. Um, so beware of uh, the tendons on, on the top of the foot because, you know, that's a, it's a very delicate area of your foot and that's an injury that does not like to go away super quickly. So do take care of your feet in that regard. This doesn't bother everybody, so this is not a uh, stay away. It's just a cautionary tale, but there is really nothing to this tongue whatsoever. Um, as far as um, just the overall impression of the shoe, much better the second time I ran it on when I actually did the workout. You know, I was not gonna hold one easy run against the shoe. That That's not fair to do to any um, manufacturer, really. But I was pleasantly surprised when I actually took the shoe to pace. This shoe, however, is not for everybody. If you have issues with your lower leg in particular, uh, calf, Achilles, plantar, be very careful. If, uh, if you would love to switch over to a zero drop shoe. If you like the wider toe box of the Ultra, um, this, this would be a great shoe for you. Just carefully transition into zero drop. Now, if you've been running in Hoka or Topo, they have three, four, and five millimeter drop shoes. You'll, you'll have an easier transition. If you're coming more from Nike or Adidas with eight and 10 millimeter drop shoes, you have, might have a little bit of a transition there. So that would just be my uh, cautionary tale there. Uh, the shoe's not for everybody, but it is still worth a try. The carbon plate is tastefully done. I feel like it's a great co uh, combination of softness underfoot without getting mushy. So the shoe will hold um, its constitution for you through a whole marathon, but you're also getting a little bit of, of the pop of the plate. So if you are a strong midfoot, forefoot runner, and you like a wide toe box, uh, give Ultra a go. And as we kind of just segue the video a little bit uh, into my post fart like um, reaction to the shoe, um, I'll go on a little bit about that big toe joint. I'm back at Craig Ranch. Just finished the fart look. Wasn't uh, a really hard effort, but it was quick enough to put those to the test. So I figured I would uh, come back on and give you a little bit of a rundown of what I think of the shoe so far. It's very soft. It's very uh, comfortable under your forefoot. And if you are a good midfoot to forefoot runner, as you probably should be with ultras, given that they are a zero drop shoe, uh, you'd have some probably have some good luck with the with the ultra. Particularly if you have a wider toe box and you don't, uh, you're not prone to lower leg injury. As you can see here, the toe box is quite spacious, luxurious. So, what did they do for me while I was making the efforts? Um, first one was a little slow getting going on, just my legs are tired. But uh, uh, once I sped up on the second two minute interval, the uh, when I got forward on my toes, that's when you started to feel the pop of that carbon plate. And the softness with the pop kind of kept the ride comfortable and smooth. Uh, as you transition kind of through the gait cycle and transition, I mean, kind of when you land a little bit on that midfoot, and then roll off the toe. Um, you definitely use your big toe joint still a bit, which is a good thing when with carbon plates. Is if uh, if you have too stiff of a carbon plated shoe, you, that big toe joint can go to sleep on you, and you know cause cause your foot to get lazy. And while well, you need support, and the whole point of carbon shoes is to make you more efficient, particularly at higher paces, you do need to. Be cognizant of your own biomechanical nuances and your and your needs for training. So I think the ultras, you know, they uh, they bend in the right way. So with that, so like I said, you're gonna get keep using your foot like you're supposed to. Ultra is all about 
you know, having having a strong foot and they build all their shoes to kind of cater to that philosophy. But now they're giving you the pop of that plate. Now a couple of things that drove me nuts with the shoe. I don't like the tongue and I damn well don't like the laces. <laughs> so um, I had to tie the shoe again. I, um, I did a very short three mile run the other day in them. I'm very careful getting back into the ultras because um, not that I've had much experience with zero drop but the reason being is I had a surgery on my heel um, and a, a hogless deformity so I do need to be careful of the uh, the Achilles so zero drops a big step so three miles easy and now I just did uh, my fart leg run and we uh, we tested these out but I had to tie that shoe again so like three on ten with the laces and one of the grommets fell off when I was relacing the shoe to make it work for me. So between that, um, the shoe is well constructed. Um, I'm not knocking ultra with that. Uh, it, it, there's always the chance I had a fluke issue with mine, but that's okay. You know, you don't running around expecting perfection every time you, you bump into something. But you also have to. The antithesis to that is if you're gonna pay good money, then you need quality equipment. And uh, the ultra is a well-built shoe. Uh, I would explore. Uh, having different laces uh, keep um, get thicker laces because the tongue is very thin so you want to maybe dissipate some of the pressure points when you lace the top of the shoe because the, the tongue is is pretty small but you know when we break the shoe down a little bit um, in, a, in a other part of the video we'll uh, discuss the tongue a little bit so I can kind of get the camera up in the tongue and show you so you don't want to hurt the the tendons on the top of your foot is what I'm saying so with that, we'll wrap this up. Well, if you made it this far in the video, I uh, sincerely thank you for sticking out and listening to my uh, jargon and um, who hoopla about uh, the Ultra. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions um, or a different kind of workout you'd be curious about with the Ultra in particular, and if it is you know specific to you, please let me know in the comments. If you've run in a pair of ultra vanish carbons you know let 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 me know in the comments and what you thought of the shoe i'd love to hear about it and just in general anything going on in y'all's world i hope you everyone's having a good weekend or weekday whenever you're watching this video comment down below kind of some of the runs you've been doing any events that you have coming up i'd love to cheer you on and whatever uh activity you're doing and uh i very much appreciate everyone's time in the youtube community and until next time you all take care